On a regular day in Los Angeles, Eve and her children Izzy and Josh are stuck in traffic. As they engage in lively conversations, something strange happens nearby. Many cars sink into the ground from what Eve can see from her seat. They soon realize the ground beneath them is breaking, forming a sinkhole. When the family tries to run away, the cracks almost catch up with them. Josh stops to help a little girl but cannot keep up with his family after that. He eventually falls into the hole, followed by his mother. Seconds before going down, Eve tells her daughter that she loves her. An aerial view of the city shows us an enormous hole in the middle of it. People go into a frenzy and a state of emergency is declared. Somewhere else, Eve's husband Gavin is in a meeting with his employer. He is a former military pilot who left his job following a crash. It caused him to suffer mental trauma which led to hallucinations and manic episodes. Gavin sees the news about the sinkhole and runs to the site to look for his family. Finally seeing a familiar face, Izzy hugs him and cries in his arms. Gavin's heart drops upon finding out that his wife and son are no more. Suddenly, a flock of strange birds flies outside from the sinkhole and caw at the crowd before disappearing into the sky. In the following scene, we see Eve waking up in a field. Confused, she looks around and notices a green light in the sky. She is near a stone with a bloodied handprint on it. Then, she remembers the flashes of Josh falling into the hole and starts looking for him. After crossing a meadow, she reaches the woods and comes across a man, just as confused as her. Both of them notice smoke rising nearby and run to check what it is. To their surprise, every person and vehicle that fell into the sinkhole has landed here. Eve reunites with her son and the other survivors. They shortly find out that they fell from the green ripple in the sky but no one knows a way to go back up. The group is led by Dr. Sam who asks everyone to make the best out of the situation by collecting food and water. Everyone does their part for the group except a police officer named Meribeth who tries to hide a box of protein bars. When Josh calls her out, she claims that they cannot stay as a community when tough times arrive. All of a sudden, a wolf comes into their sight and attacks them. Soon, the animal is followed by its pack sending the survivors into chaos. Everyone gets inside the closest cars but Eve is stuck between two wolves. Man named Ty shoots the animal dead and saves her life. However, the bullet also hits Josh and hurts him severely. He is brought into a bus where Sam tries his best to save his life. A while later, he and Eve set off to look for an ambulance that also fell into the hole earlier. In their absence, Sam's daughter Riley takes care of Josh. Back in La, the chief scientist of the Department of Homeland Security, Dr. Sophia is delivering an official statement to the public. She claims that no person who fell into the hole has any chances of survival but they are doing their best to retrieve their bodies. After listening to her speech, Gavin gets a strange vision where he sees Eve near the rock with the handprint. He tells Izzy that he has been getting these visions since his accident but he has always only seen empty fields and meadows. This time, the vision is strange because he is seeing his family in the same place that has haunted him for so long. Meanwhile, Sophia's team sends a drone into the sinkhole but as it gets closer to the green light, it stops sending signals. Outside, Gavin gets another vision and sees the crashed drone this time. He tries telling Sophia about his visions but she dismisses him as just another mourning family member. Not just her but Izzy also thinks the same. Gavin realizes that his claims sound insane but if there is a chance his wife and son are alive, he will do anything to save them. He rushes home and looks for pictures he and Eve took on a trip because he remembers seeing the stone with the print in real life. To his surprise, he finds the picture and finds out the address where the stone is. Somewhere else, Eve and Sam are still looking for the ambulance when they find Ty about to commit the unthinkable. Eve stops him, insisting that he deserves to live no matter what he has been through. Ty joins them on the search because he saw the ambulance when he first landed. Back in Lay, Gavin finds the rock and starts digging around it to look for more clues. Izzy thinks his father has gone insane until he finds Eve's ring on the ground that she used to wear around her neck. Then, Eve and the group finally find the ambulance in an empty field. She notices the Hollywood Hill sign on the vehicle and the hill in front of them. The two look identical which means they are still in Lay but in the past when humans are yet to discover it. Suddenly, they are attacked by a tiger who chases them off the track. Sam falls down a hill but the other two cannot look for him while being chased by the beast of an animal. At one point, they are seconds away from being attacked before the tiger falls into a trap. It is clearly made by a man which means they are not the only people here. For the next few hours, they look for Sam and find him lying at the bottom of the hill. His back is injured but he is still conscious. They immediately have to get back to the camp because by now, Josh's wound has been infected. When Sam realizes that he is slowing the group, he asks the others to get to Josh first. Eve leaves Ty to take care of the man while she returns to the camp on her own. Meanwhile, Meribeth finds a car with drugs inside the trunk and seems to know who it belongs to. She starts asking people about a guy with a green jacket. While at it, she meets a girl named Veronica and her mute sister Lily. Veronica's father died in the attack yesterday and his body was dragged away by the animals. She leaves Meribeth to look after her sister before going into the woods to look for her father alongside a man named Scott. 
While on the mission, Scott finds out Veronica is extremely religious and thinks if they are lost, God will help them. Soon, Eve arrives at the camp and gives her son an antibiotic. His wound is also sewn and his temperature starts to stabilize. In the meantime, Gavin watches a doctor talking about the sinkhole on TV. Since Sophie didn't take him seriously, Gavin decides to meet the doctor to ask for help. Initially, the doctor is skeptical but he agrees to carbon date the ring Gavin found. Somewhere else, Sophie finds out about Gavin's plan and calls him to the base. Three years ago, a similar sinkhole was formed in the desert and on the same day, around the same area. Gavin's accident took place. The results of the carbon dating come out and the ring is said to be from 10,000 BC. Because of all the evidence, Sophie believes Gavin and starts devising a rescue plan. She introduces him to a special airplane that they have designed to send into the sinkhole. Gavin will not be allowed to pilot it but his close friend Levy is called for the job. Back in 10,000 BC, Veronica and Scott come across a bunch of camels about to walk into a tar pit. Scott stops them and saves their lives. At the same time, they see Veronica's father's corpse in the middle of a palm symbol made of stones. In the woods, Sam and Ty meet a man named Lucas. When they reach the camp, we find out that Lucas is Maribeth's son and a drug dealer. They are not on good terms but Maribeth is protective of him. Riley takes care of Sam and his back injury alongside Scott. They use the drugs they found in one of the cars as an anesthetic. When Scott returns, he tells everyone that they are in 10,000 BC. He is an anthropology graduate who knows that eight camel remains were rescued from tar pits a month ago. Those were the same eight camels he saved earlier. Lucas refuses to believe him and sets out on his own journey to look for a way out. Maribeth follows him and the two eventually reach a trap that was definitely made by a human. Meanwhile, Eve and Ty also set off to search for food but while hunting, they come across a bear. It chases them into a cave where their life is saved. However, the opening to the cave is blocked by stones and they are stuck inside. Suddenly, Lucas and Maribeth appear behind them, having entered the cave to look for the native person. They explore the place and eventually come across a water body. Ty goes in to check for a way out but comes across a bigger surprise. Everyone follows him into the water and come out the other side to a years old corpse. It is clear that the man was from the future like them and lived in isolation. He committed the unthinkable with a gun that is lying on the side. The group decides to keep this a secret from the rest of the survivors not wanting to destroy their spirit. They also find edible mushrooms outside. By the end of the day, they return to the camp with food for everyone. While enjoying them, Ty tells Eve that he has a brain tumor and doesn't have long to live. He had given up hope but the sinkhole has given him a purpose in life. In the future, Levy and Gavin discuss the mission as Levy gets ready for it. Before leaving, he confesses to having an affair with Eve long ago and the two separate on a bad note. The flight takes off as the mission control holds its breath. However, before reaching the green light, they lose connection and the plane crashes in the past. Gavin and Izzy hug each other, assuming that they have lost Levy as well. In the camp, Riley thanks Scott because he used the drugs found in the car to help her father earlier. Scott takes the compliment before revealing that he buried them somewhere in the forest and doesn't remember where. Suddenly, the green light grows bigger and the aircraft with Levy enters the atmosphere. In the morning, Lucas, Eve, Josh, Scott, and Riley set off to look for the aircraft. They eventually come across Levy. He reunites with Eve before telling them about his mission. The group is happy that people back home are doing something to help them. After that, the group looks for the crashed airplane that might still be functioning. After a few minutes of walking, they reach the crash site and find the plane with the radio and engine compressor broken. If they can find the right parts, Levy might be able to fix it but it seems impossible to get the parts in this age. Instead, they collect food supplies that he brought, deciding to return to the camp. To their surprise, the airplane receives a signal from three miles away in the woods. It might be the only way for them to get out so they decide to follow it. Meanwhile, in the camp, Lily is being pressured by her sister Veronica to refrain from talking to anyone. Frustrated, she runs to the woods and comes across something horrific. When everyone gathers around a while later, they discover the dead body of a man who was one of them. Lily knows what happened to him but Veronica doesn't let her talk to anyone. Ty, who is also a psychiatrist, makes it his mission to help the little girl. Back in the present, Lee is hit by an earthquake. It doesn't do much harm but the cause is declared to be Levy's airplane crash. Because of this, any further rescue mission is halted. Gavin goes to Sophia's office to retaliate but finds out that she is on a holiday. Instead, he finds a picture of her with a woman named Rebecca who was also a part of the other sinkhole exploration program. He assumes that she has the answers to his questions and finds out her address on the internet. After that, he and Izzy drive to meet Rebecca. The following morning, they reach Rebecca's home and find her with Sophie. They reveal that when the last sinkhole appeared in a desert, a group of scientists was sent inside to explore it. However, the green rift closed before they could come out which trapped them in 10,000 BC. 
for the past three years. The group that was trapped consisted of people close to Sophie and Rebecca so they are adamant about continuing the rescue mission even though the High Command is against it. Rebecca has built an aircraft in secrecy that will help them enter the sinkhole again. It has modifications that won't cause an earthquake, either. However, they will have to launch it in secret and it will have to be piloted by Gavin. In the camp, Ty sits Lily down and asks her questions about what she saw yesterday. Veronica insists that she cannot speak but Lily proves her wrong by saying that she saw an old man where the dead body was found. As she tells them this, the said old man is watching them from the woods. Somewhere else, Lucas finds out that his stash of drugs was hidden by Scott and follows him everywhere since the drugs were worth a lot. The group eventually reaches a fort-like place, clearly built by a civilization. Scott assumes that it is an indigenous civilization of the past. The place is also the location where the signal is coming from. They enter the fort and separate into groups of two to look for the source. Josh and Riley end up in a room with a secret door that leads them outside the fort. Meanwhile, Eve and Levy go to a strange building where a dead body lies inside, of a palm-shaped mark made with stones. Levy reveals that his mission was also to find the scientists who disappeared three years ago and the dead man is one of them. At the same time, Lucas and Scott get into an argument when Lucas finds out Scott lost his stash. Suddenly, they are attacked by a native of the fort who knocks them both out. Outside, Josh and Riley are also spotted and chased down the hills. They hide in between the rocks and somehow manage to save their lives. Then, the natives go after Levy and Eve. While trying to run away, they end up in a room filled with children. One little guy asks them to hide and sends the guards away when they come looking for the trespassers. Scott and Lucas wake up next to the dead body from earlier. They use a lighter to free their hands and run outside. By now, Josh and Riley have also returned to get the rest of the survivors. They gather up out of the native's sight with the help of a kid. He shows them the way out even though the leader of the tribe is his grandfather. Before everyone can escape, they are found and are about to be killed until a woman stops the people. In the end, the group escapes and goes back to the camp. Scott is in shock because he heard the tribe speak English when the Europeans aren't supposed to come to the land decades later. In the following scene, Levy and the group reach the camp and tell the others about everything that happened. When it gets dark, Ty notices Lily sitting alone and approaches her. He wins her trust before asking her if she is hiding something. Lily reveals that Veronica is not her sister. A year ago, she was kidnapped by Veronica and her father and has been with them ever since. Ty is shocked at the revelation. When Veronica arrives with food, she senses that he knows the truth and runs away. Meanwhile, in the future, Rebecca brings Gavin to an ancient civilization which is assumed to be where the survivors of the sinkhole ended up. This is proven when they find an ancient letter from Eve, apologizing to Gavin for not believing his hallucinations. Gavin is also told that he has to pilot the plane into the sinkhole today, or else it will close the next evening and the others will remain trapped in the past. There is a chance that he will never return but Izzy allows him to go regardless. Please like and subscribe our channel, and press the bell icon for further notification. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day ahead.